sponsored in part by Noble L Works over on 1621 South Sinclair, where you can get discounts by just mentioning HITI, Halos in the Infield, drink discounts on us, baby. And also by 714 Tickets, 714 Tickets, 714 Tickets. The price you see is the price you get, and you also get 10% additionally off in the apply now code once you order your tickets just by mentioning HITI, Halos in the Infield. Now enjoy the show. Live every night on the Halos in the Infield Baseball Network. Welcome to the Halos in the Infield post-game podcast with Todd Fox, sponsored by Noble Ale Works Brewery, as well as 714 Tickets. This is your nightly destination for all things Los Angeles Angels. Come join Todd as he recaps every thrilling and disappointing moment from tonight's game, win or lose. Get ready for insightful analysis, fan reactions, and Todd's engaging commentary. Plus, fans can call in live to the Halo Honk Line to have their voices and opinions heard as well. It's the Halo Honk Line. Stay tuned in for your chance to win free Halo's merchandise with our weekly trivia. It's time to dive into the heart of Angels baseball with Todd Fox on the Halos in the infield post-game podcast. There's a drive from Mike Trout. See you later. That is long gone. It's the Todd Fox post-game podcast with your host, Todd Fox. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome into a Todd Fox Halos in the Infield post game show here on the Halos in the Infield Baseball Network. We want to welcome you into your Saturday afternoon, enjoying it with us, unfortunately, after a loss. Now, yesterday, if you caught the podcast, if you caught the post game, you, you heard us say, hey, it was awesome, you know, to, uh, you know, we hate repeating ourselves, but we love repeating ourselves if something good happens. And it's happened with Reed Detmers three straight times. He's come out and dominated, looked like a Cy Young winning a pitcher. But then there's the other side. There's the Griffin Canning side. The first time that he came out, the uh, you know, to start the season, he got blasted. Uh, at home and then uh, or on the road actually and then you do that again you come out and you have a second opportunity at home to try to get things straight and you get blasted you get your start pushed back here to to maybe have a little bit better you know an appearance here in Boston and no right away he put the angels behind the eight ball you could say that he had some rough bounces here and there but you're still having bad mechanics out there on the mound. And it showed today as the Angels take a loss. So for as good as we've praised Tyler Anderson and Reed Detmers for, you know, hopefully Tyler Anderson will have his third straight start. He has a chance to have the most shutout innings uh, next to Nolan Ryan uh, tomorrow. Just two more innings to do that starting the season. But you get this whole issue with Griffin Canning, a pitcher that the Angels absolutely need to get innings from not giving you those set innings. And if you look at the things tonight, again, you could go back and say, well, Griffin Canning, seven runs in four innings, six of which were earned. The bullpen, again, throwing up zeros. That's about the only thing that you could take out of this one as a positive. Because other than that, through the first few innings, the Angels really didn't do much of anything. We're going to go through the lineups. We're going to talk about what happened and let's get it started. Uh, Griffin Canning takes the loss, goes to 0-2, four innings pitch, nine hits allowed, seven runs, six earned, six strikeouts, one home run. We're also waiting on news of uh, Sean Well, He did uh, hit himself with that foul ball, and he left the game, and the Angels returned the favor by M- Miguel Sano, and I'll talk about that a little later, but uh, Fulmer. How about Fulmer, the kid, come out there, 62 pitches, eight pitches less than our fearless starting pitcher. He only allowed two hits, but he did walk three, but he had five strikeouts. And he was getting pinched a little bit, <clears throat> and I thought it was a great comment by Mark Gubazal saying there's a couple times of those walks where you know he kind of didn't trust his best stuff at the end. So like when he got a count to be three and two or he got him like two and two, he would go with that slider or maybe the sweeper or the split finger pitch in the dirt or like, you know, below the strike zone and trying to get him to swing and miss instead of just going with those pitches over or somewhere close on the corner or in the strike zone to try to get a strike out there. But still, all in all, I thought Fulmer pitched a decent game. Uh, it was kind of 50-50 on balls to strikes, but still not bad. Still not bad for a guy who's getting his feet wet and a guy who's not supposed to be pitching that many innings, and he gave you four quality innings. It's better than Suarez. 
better than my comeback player. Uh, he he pitched his ass off, and unfortunately, <clears throat> uh, you know, whenever Wayne Randazzle tends to speak something into existence, it doesn't happen, and he did it again. He said, well, all you got to do is get to that uh, Boston bullpen. It's going to be one of those bullpen days, and once they get past the, the starting pitcher, the, you know, like it should be a bullpen game, and you could take advantage of the Red Sox. Well, he spoke that into <clears throat> not – it actually happening the way he wants it. But whenever he speaks of something like that, it usually goes the opposite way. And guess what? Just like he pays bets, it went the opposite way. And you had four innings of, or five innings of actually good baseball where the bullpen picked up the win Wissert, whatever you want to uh, call him, uh, pitched two innings after former angels, all-star Chris well pitched four innings, gave up only two runs on five hits, four strikeouts, the only blemish was that home run to Taylor Ward. Wizard came in, pitched two innings, got three strikeouts, qualified for the win. Then Wikowski came in. Then you got uh, Rodriguez, who slammed the door in the ninth inning. So their <clears throat> their bullpen did a fantastic job. So all that stuff about, oh, this is not going to happen, right? All they got to do is get to the bullpen. Well, not so much. Angels left seven guys on base. Uh, they would go one for five with runners in scoring position. The only run or the only uh, hit they got with runners in scoring position was the home run by, uh, you know, freaking in fuego Taylor Ward, dude. Uh, Taylor Ward is on one right now. Five home runs, 16 RBIs to start the season. Who would have thunk that? Um, <clears throat> so he's off to a very nice start. I thought Mike Trout's uh, plate appearances weren't all that great. Um, but he did get robbed on a couple of them. Uh, you know, he wasn't really trying to hit the home run, which was nice to see. You had uh, you had a couple opportunities in this game to get some runs, and you didn't fire back, especially that first inning. Again, we talked about it so far. This is a team that if they're going to win and they're going to stay in games, they got to take advantages when presented with them. And a chance with the bases loaded, I get it. There was two outs already. Neto's got to, you know, come through. He had a ground ball to short which, you know, if the shortstop, you know, of two two feet away from the shortstop, that gets into the center field, it's four to two. But unfortunately, they don't get that luck. And, you know, there was a couple other plays that they were robbed. You had, you know, because we're going to start this off in the first inning. Um, <clears throat> you know, Yoshida would single to right. Abreu would score. Abreu got on second base because he hit a flare to right field. The glove, I, at first I thought the ball dove before Hicks got there, but then seeing the replay, Hicks was in perfect position to make a nice Tim Salmon like right field catch instead Hicks drops the ball closes a glove like a little leaguer too too early the ball drops and then he has a nonchalant uh you know regroup to the ball by the time he gets to it the runner Abreu is already at second base and and you know so then Yoshida comes up hits a flare it's one to nothing you're like okay that's not too bad Griffin Canning's gotten no breaks in the last couple at batters. So you're thinking, okay, you have a runner or on first right here. Let's just get out of it. I think it was like the next pitch, maybe the second pitch to cases. And that fool hit like a moonshot batting practice home run. It's all of a sudden three to nothing. And then you also, then you have another single that scored Valdez. It was four to nothing. You're still behind the eight ball. Then that bases loaded situation happened in the top of the second. Then what do we say? And what has happened every time the Angels try to get momentum back and you don't take advantage of the of, of the uh, momentum shift, what does usually the baseball gods do to, per, to punish you? They stick it right to you and the other team scores a run or two because that's exactly what happened. I guarantee dog to you, if Nettles' ball goes up the middle and they score one to two runs right there, I believe the Red Sox don't get nothing in the second inning. But no. They're shut down in the, in the top of the second, bottom of the second. Almost immediately, the Red Sox come out and get a run by Abreu again. It's five to nothing. Then then Yoshida singles again. It's six to nothing. So it, it's it, they just got kicked in the ass, and the same two guys started it, got it going. Then you think, okay, the Angels are going to get back into this game. Ward homers to left field. Rendon scores. You're like, all right, cool, six to two. They had a chance when it uh, after, and then in the fourth inning, Duran would sacrifice fly to make it seven to two. That was it for a canning. The Angels had a chance. You thought there was going to be a two run homer that was robbed at the fence. Trout would make a nice play to rob a, a, a home run ball later on, a real nice play. So the balls weren't bouncing the Angels' way 
you had Trout making a nice defensive play. Miguel Sano again came in for Shauna Well. He would uh, abruptly injure one of the Red Sox right there, which I believe it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was Hamilton. Maybe I think it was Hamilton. He was trying to get over to uh, second base when he was picked off, and Sano fell right on his freaking wrist, and uh, that was that that was unfortunate. But uh, Sano's like my bad dog, and. <laughs> I don't think they said anything back to him. And besides, who would want to punch or try to go after Sano? Sano would have kicked their ass. So, And again, this is another game where this is the last time and only time you're going to be in Boston. And it would be nice for the Red Sox to don their regular jerseys at least one day of this weekend. But instead, it looks like they're going to use the entire weekend because of the marathon to wear those ugly, ugly-ass City Connect jerseys. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be a thing again tomorrow. But hopefully well, Tyler Anderson can can uh, can get the dub tomorrow so we could finally win a series because we lost both series at home against said Boston and Tampa. Now we're on the road, and we got Boston here for one more tomorrow. Hopefully we get the rubber one tomorrow. And then there's a four-game set in Tampa, and then there's a three-game set in, in uh, Cincinnati. So hopefully the Angels can get it going. As far as the hitting real quick before I get into the awards, uh, you had 10 strikeouts for the Angels. Anything, whenever the Angels get 10 and above, they usually lose. And and again, 10 out of your 27 outs are, are wasted on strikeouts. That's not a good thing. The averages continue to suck for the Angels if you look up and down the averages. I mean, at least Rendon's batting Mendoza now. Sean Will's at 108. Sano's at 207. Trout's 283. That's fine. Taylor Ward's 310. That's good. Hicks is 176. Drury is 170. He's been a super disappointment. I know he starts slow, but dog, you got to get it going. A couple more opportunities in this game and, he, and it slipped right through your hands again. Moniac's batting only 179, although he had a hit. <clears throat> uh, Dell got in there for an at-bat to strike out. Ohapi is your king, man. Two more hits tonight, 366. That dude has an on-base percentage of 447. I'm loving his approach to the plate and even more behind the plate calling uh, balls and strikes uh and and what sucks is though i just don't want them to burn him out dude give him a day or two at dh trust dude at least not to get a catcher's interference every now and then Neto is really disappointing me uh you know like i can see drury because he has a track record i know he'll pull out of it shauna wells a very big concern for me but Neto is too and I'm not liking his uppercut swings. He's got to put more of the of the bat on the ball, man. To put the barrel on the bat, go with it. Stop with the uppercut swings, bro. That is not your game. Once he gets that going, watch him just flourish. It's just right now, it it kind of sucks, man. He's not giving you what you what you need right now. And I think the more guys like freaking Jury start to you know uh, if, taking him longer to get going, and guys like Shauna will taking him longer to get going. Ohapi's going to move up into that five spot, maybe even two spot. Because you, I mean, it's hard to believe he's an eighth hitter in the lineup batting that low. And Neto, I would love for him to be a number two. I just don't trust him yet. And and right now he's got to flip that order, but you got to do a better job. As far as the Red Sox, they left only five guys on base tonight. They didn't have many too, uh, too many opportunities themselves except early against Canning because Canning was awful tonight. So... With that being said, let's get into the awards, shall we? And we're going to get into the first award tonight, which is the Golden Stamos for the best player out there. That is one sexy, sexy. I mean, that is one good award right there. John Stamos. Uh, we're going to go into the John Stamos award tonight, which is the best player on the field. And that's going to go to Tristan Cases. Yes, Tristan Cases, the very household name, Tristan Cases. I'm only giving it to him because, again, there wasn't an outstanding pitcher for the Red Sox. There wasn't anyone that blew you away with a multi-hit game. I mean, Yoshida's you know, two hits were bleeders. So it wasn't like they beat the the tar out of the red the Angels tonight. I think the only one that made a, a statement hit tonight was freaking Tristan Cases. He had two hits, but the one was a moonshot. I mean, that had no, I mean, literally 
uh, Hicks was barely running back just to, you know, make Canning feel a little bit better as if he had a shot at it. But that was like 30 rows up in that Boston right field. That was a moonshot home run and really a deal breaker for the Angels, although it was only one nothing at the time when he hit that two run blast. I mean, it did not look good. And you could tell right away this was not going to be Canning's day. So with that being said, Let's get into the other award, which is the award we never like to give to an angel, but it usually happens when the angels lose and even sometimes when they win. So that's kind of ironic. But here is the Nacho Knight Award. I love the nachos, gas station nachos. I love the nachos, yeah. Gas station nachos, ow. Those look disgusting, by the way. When Randy created that, I never really looked at those little circular O's. I was like, who put SpaghettiOs in their goddamn, uh, you know, notch uh, in their nachos? But apparently those are the ones, but they look disgusting. And I don't know, peanuts in there? That's nasty, bro. <laughs> that cheese has got to smell like feet. But uh, so far, tonight's Nacho Award winner is Griffin Canning. I mean, who else can you give it to? Basically, Griffin Canning, four innings pitch, nine hits allowed, six earned runs, one moonshot home run to cases. I mean, that was just an out. That was a terrible start. You And again, you need a bounce back start. I know that it was stacked against him because you're in Boston, usually a place where the Angels struggle. But still, I mean, get the ball down. I mean, again, just look at the two pitchers the Angels threw out there tonight. Griffin Canning, where was his pitches? All letter high, belt high, all in the strike zone if they were in the strike zone. Um, he had no really good rhythm. And look at Fulmer. Fulmer, a guy who's getting his feet wet with the Angels, not really a high prospect, not really a high, guy that's supposed to be out there. Yet where were his, where were his pitches for the most part? Down and away, down and inside. Uh, when they were up, they were crowding the inside part of the plate. He was utilizing the strike zone really well. And and I loved his approach. Hell, give me his first his four innings in the first four innings. This game is completely different. But no, we started with Griffin Canning, and Griffin Canning was all up in the zone. And again, for what they were talking about during the game, hey, his uh, velocity is down two miles per hour. Okay, well, if it, if you're if you have a, a you know you're losing two miles per hour, which doesn't seem like a lot, but is a lot in Major League Baseball, and easier for hitters to catch up to it and do whatever the hell they want with it, you gotta have good movement on those pitches. You can't have changeups flatter than a pancake. You can't have fastballs on a straight line. And unfortunately, that's what he's been doing. And unfortunately, that's why he's been getting roughed up so much. So this was just a bad, bad start once again for Griffin Canning. So one more graphic to play before I get into the comments. Uh, actually, a couple real quick. If you guys didn't see the podcast last night and you watched ESPN, ESPN came out with a, and the last thing I'm going to say on Otani, on our ex-girlfriend here, I just want to get this out of the way for those who missed the show yesterday. Uh, they were like, oh, well, Otani's talking the universal language of baseball since he can't talk English. Can't talk English, huh? So, hey, welcome back, man. Thank you. So you excited about the All-Star game? Yeah, sure. Well, one thing that's changed for sure, you're use not using your translator. You've come a long ways to learn the English, huh? I need it. You need it? I need to translate. No. Harold <laughs> I- Reynolds is like, no, you don't. And then how about this one? Uh, thank you, Dusty. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, introduction and the kind word. Uh, BBWAA, uh, thank you for the hosting such a great event and always making us feel welcome. To all the writers who voted for me, thank you. This MVP award is very prestigious and winning this award means the world to me. I wish I could talk Spanish. Just give me a sentence. And I, I can't even say a sentence in Spanish like that. That, And I've been with plenty of Latinas. I'm terrible at Spanish. Okay. And this dude is just like, again, this he's with Americans. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of Americans that know uh, Japanese because of him. And he knows Spanish. We've seen him talk to Carlos Estevez. So all I'm saying, and the last thing I'm going to say about that is stop bullshitting me about how he can't talk Spanish. Or talk English. Sorry. He can talk English very well. Now, here is how we feel about the Angels losing tonight. 
And a lot of you say it's a savage garden. It's a truly madly deeply. Well, we had a Stuka celebration. Now we have a savage garden celebration when a team loses from start to finish. Because that's when you play this. You don't play, you play the buttercup when you blow a save. You play the Stukas when you win a game. And you play the Savage Garden when you lose from start to finish. I hope you guys and gals enjoy that. <laughs> I'm not going to want to play that very much, but when it does happen, you got to go to the well and uh, bring it up, right? So let's get into the comments, shall we? Let's talk about uh, balls, balls, and Griffin Canning because Griffin Canning is been has been absolutely terrible, and uh, well, he's had a lot of balls. Time for you to check out what I want. I want balls and balls and John Stamos. Griffin Canning sucked as an un understatement, Jason Hess says. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Chubb says, catch uh, Canning and Sandy flipping burgers at McDonald's and Catella. <laughs> Jason Hess says, we need more small ball, but we had this. Oh, no. We suck again. Big 20 says, yes, sir, I surfed again. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. That's why everyone was waiting for it. Uh, Fernando says, Nolan Shonawell has testicular contusion. Ron Washington said he won't play tomorrow, and he's going on the IL for a, <laughs> a bruised ball. Wow. That, that has got to hurt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's got to hurt, man. Damn, that he's not going to be playing with it. It was pretty cocky. I want balls and no, balls cocky. and John Stamos. <laughs> the chair says Canning is not our guy, pal. Uh, Big 20 says he will do better at home, hopefully. Oh, geez, that's asking her a lot. Shout out to Carson Fulmer. Yeah, Carson Fulmer, the chair, was awesome tonight. Yeah! Gooby kept saying the uh, thigh far too much. <laughs> yeah, Steve Elise was like, uh, his thigh is not his penis. AC says Canning needs to start browsing for houses in Salt Lake. <laughs> How dare you? Dan says, now we need Stukas played backwards, two steps forward, three steps back. <laughs> you mean this can go with it, too. That's Griffin Canning's intro. Trade Canning to Milwaukee. What would Milwaukee give us besides cheese? Balls, balls, and sham wows balls. <laughs> oh, man. These nuts. <laughs> Got <laughs> Got That's what he's saying. <laughs> That's what he, the the pitcher was saying right now. He's like two two pitch. These nuts. <laughs> Taylor Ward smashed thirty bombs this season. Watch one Jets pod says hell yeah. Sega says uh, Kenny needs to be sent down for once. Kenny is the next man up and was well as tired of us giving dudes chances. Yeah, that's what we do. We're that we're that bad girlfriend that's just like nah. He's okay. He'll change. <laughs> Uh, Ward saying staying healthy in his contract season. Yeah, it's magical how that happens. The chair, <laughs> magical. Eric says, "Good day, everybody. How's it going?" Uh, let's see. Uh, also, laugh out loud. Uh, Cy Young. Wait, Cy Criswell. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, he fucking Joe Adele. It. Yeah, dude. Joe Adele has not been playing either. He he was wearing that comfortable uniform today. Uh, Jason Hess says, for us early 80s and 90s Angels fans, <clears throat> I believe it won't ever be the same no matter if Artie dies. Feels like the years of Gene Autry were our best years. Mm, Gene Autry did a lot of good, but towards the end, he wasn't in control. He was just too old, and he probably should have sold before he died or gave it to someone to run it better. So that was his only problem. But I think Disney did give us our best years, and they did help Artie's first few years. Uh, Ward's got a beautiful swing right now. Yes, he does, Sega. Uh, after today's effort, I'm reassessing the road series to five and five. I got my honk out too early. Well, you know what? You got your, you got your, uh, <laughs> you lost your composure because you were being like a bootlicking house. Call man. me a bootlicking house, man, all you want. I don't give a damn. And Being then <laughs> you were filling up on those. Got he. <laughs> got he. <laughs> Once you're 
once you were filling up on those, then you started. You got way too excited. Bad sports weekend for me. I've uh, been heartbroken for the last few days now. Fernando is feeling it because of the goddamn Arizona Coyotes leaving, man. They are gone. Uh, playoffs? Well, no, not playoffs. <laughs> That's what sucks. <clears throat> Canning deserves to be R2-D2 Golden Dildo Award. <laughs> Maybe we could pull that one out. No pun intended, Randy. We can have a golden dildo-shaped R2-D2. <laughs> that would get us fired and canceled for sure. Uh, Jason says, it's okay, uh, Fernando. Your Coyotes will be Utah Profits. <laughs> <laughs> That's messed up, man. <laughs> you know what won't be happening tonight is Shauna Will, if he's got a significant other, he won't be feeling this. <laughs> balls, balls, and canning sucks. That's absolutely sure. That's, That's pretty yeah. cocky. I want balls and balls and John Stamos. Canning sucks. Honestly, my Mariners are having the same problem every game. It's like 10 strikeouts, Eric Wall says. And you know what, Eric? I have been paying attention a little bit to Mariners baseball. They've been giving up runs. Guys who were pitching really good last year aren't, and they are not hitting with runners in scoring position. Yes, they do look like our halos. R. Martinez says, on a good note, the, the Raiders lost yesterday. Hope they lose again today. I made my brother bet he's a Raiders fan. Well, not every family has one, and unfortunately, they spread like cockroaches. No offense to your brother. I'm sure he's a good guy when he's not rooting for the Raiders. Uh, yeah, the, those nachos definitely look like SpaghettiOs, Jason says. Also, Todd's favorite kind of cheese. Shut up! Shut up! Smart thinking. Now I know! Not and you too. Is half the battle. G.I. Joe! Kevin Boyer says, Canning left more over the middle of the plate than a cafeteria worker. <laughs> oh, jeez. No adjustments whatsoever, one Jets pod says. Uh, the chairs. Will you guys stop? <laughs> I think Canning did try to straighten out some of the strike zone or, or did try to straighten out, got some strikes out. But he did, but, I mean, he was still pathetic, though, today. Uh, Marty says, uh, Raider fans say that this clip is AI, artificial intelligence, Todd. Yeah, exactly. That, that's all edited by me. Boy, if I was anywhere close to being that good at editing. <clears throat> Update from last night, my Titans rattled off seven runs in the bottom. Oh, that's disgusting, dude. I mean, that's <laughs> that's what I call quality right there. Also, up to oh yeah, yeah, three uh eleven eight win. Okay, speak English or speak English, and uh, as an Hispanic Latino is wrong, my friend. My mother hated the Latina thing. Just FYI. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, is it Latinx? I don't believe in that either. I mean. I, if you say Mexican, they're like, well, we're not all Mexican. Believe me, I had that uh, conversation many times with Honduras and Salvadorian. So I don't know. Is there, I mean, because you 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 guys lump us white guys into everything. It's like, no, I'm I'm German. No, you're white. I'm Italian. No, you're white. No, I'm, I'm from France. Oh, you're white. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's all over the place. Uh, Mitch Hanniger on Seattle had testicular surgery a couple years ago and literally got hit in the dick. Oh, gnarly. Also, that's an angel injury if I ever heard one. <laughs> I think angel fans get that often is hitting the balls. Uh, let's see. Also, uh, Rendon be like bruised balls to get on the IL. Okay, I will keep it in the memory bank for later in the year. <laughs> they should have never gotten rid of Levon Soto. Well, they could use them right now, couldn't they? Uh, Brewers, if in contention, will need starters, and maybe the Angels can fleece them for some starters back. I don't know. Look, the Brewers have been making some really good trades. I mean, even the trade to uh, Baltimore wasn't the haul they thought they would get. They still got some decent return. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're not going to be that stupid. Uh, but but I, I but I see where you're going with that one, James. <clears throat> Keep the Coyotes in Arizona. Wait, wrong, wrong show. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to work over here. I mean, look. I would love for them to stay. I hate when franchises move. Like, losing my Sonics killed me as an NBA fan. And so I can imagine it's probably going to do the same for you uh, when it comes down to it. <clears throat> uh, let's see uh, where we got here. Cooper Criswell was once upon a time a draft pick of the Angels. Round 13, 2018, started one game, let him go and picked him up. Or Tampa Bay picked him up right away. Well, that's our, that's our awesome, uh, you know, 
our our awesome team right here that never understands good pitching even if he is a good starter but it's not like he lit it up tonight so i'm not going to look at it and be like oh god we missed out balls balls and todd's lack of spanish Time for you to check out what i want i want balls and balls and john Stamos. todd spanish leo carson what a move wait wrong channel there's this guy no years compared to 02 and 09 that will never happen again god damn it chair come on come on be a little upbeat man i i after a loss like today, I want to believe again. Rendon sucks, sucks Steve Elise. John Stamos choked on me. Yes, Adele sucks. Yes, we know the quotes. Uh, Randy, uh, for making a dildo, you would. <laughs> oh, jeez. If you're a so-called angel fan, if you're a halo honk for life like me, then shut up. Have you seen the Mariners fans made sell the team shirts? Really? <clears throat> aren't they owned by uh, Nintendo or partial owner? I, I forget who their owner is up there, <laughs> but from what I heard, I don't, I never heard that they were complaining as much for the ownership. Maybe Eric can fill us in on that. Even 50 cent could have pitched better than. <laughs> that is one of the best first pitches I've ever seen, by the way, Dan said, well, he threw it as straight as puffy. No, not even a rim shot. No. Okay, late. I'll take that. Uh, hey, how about Benny Hill music for losing as well? Canning sucked, but the home plate umpire hosed Sano. Uh, that was super low, called strike three. Boy, Sano's been getting hosed a lot. Uh, but, uh, well, I'll think about it. Shauna Will got hit in D's nuts. Yeah, I played that one earlier. Uh, Doyers, Faders, team, get, team Ghetto equals Team Ghetto, yes. Canning his butt cheeks, <laughs> Rustunning says. Eric says, James, that's awesome, my friend. We need to wake the F up, LOL. Oh, so he's he's for it. Oh, God, here comes Grillmaster. Todd, you misread my comment. Titans won 11 to 8. I, I didn't. I read the first part that you did not finish, and then uh, I did not finish the third, second part of it because I already read most of it. So, yes, we know your team came back. Uh, let's see. Also, I'm sure Canning wished that Stevie Wonder when the ball was smashed today. Or he was Stevie Wonder. No one wants to see that shit, even Stevie. <laughs> yes. Also, not uh, no such thing as latent Latinx. Oh, Latinx. I'm sorry. Go back. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And then when it comes to Hispanics, Latinos, or w whatever, people want to be called. Uh, I just say Spanish speakers. Oh, okay. I mean, look, it's it's harder for a guy like me, again, <clears throat> or, you know, because there's certain people that can say certain things. And when you're ousted and you can't say certain things, it's like, OK, what do I say? So I just try to try to be as politically correct as I can, I, even though I hate being that way. I thought Angels would be 2-0 and against Boston. David says, yes, I agree. Coyotes hockey team should move to. <laughs> you want we can barely support the one we have. And that team is ass cheeks right now. So we we're gonna take two teams. Watch Stand and Deliver, Todd. I have seen that movie, but uh, but Jason says I'm bilingual in Spanish, but uh, that's just because I served a ridiculous two year Mormon. <laughs> Please tell me you still have your bicycle helmet. I'm not making fun of you, but that is that would be a cool souvenir to have. And that three year thing, I remember asking uh, a couple Mormons like like, so what do you do after your three years of preaching? You know. And they were just like, oh, this, you know, we either decide to keep on doing it or, you know, we're ordained. I'm like, OK, figure. I, I mean, I didn't know. I mean, it's like <clears throat> once I told them or once I asked them, you know, like we had this at the we had this uh, conversation at the end. Of, and I thought it was fitting. Smart thinking. Now I know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. I don't know why I sang G.I. Joe after they told me about the Mormons, but I just felt it was appropriate. Uh, I can't believe we're ever again. Uh, wait, I can't believe ever again until Artie is gone. That's what I would would say too. <clears throat> um, reason why not Latin? Where where's the country or continent of Latin America? It does not exist. Hispanic is correct. Okay, I, I get it. I get that. That's uh, that makes more sense when you think about it. Uh, straight says Puffy. <laughs> And rim shots. <laughs> Anaheim will never let go of the Ducks. That's for sure, Jason. Anaheim Angels will tomorrow. Hopefully get that W, David says. Also, R. Martinez says, Artie Moreno consider himself Irish and French based on his inability to identify geographically. <laughs> 
good point. When does the season start? Well, it's funny you should say, because after every loss, you know, there there is sort of a, a question like, like, when are we going to get back to basics? When is this team going to start playing again? Roger? We got a lot of baseball left to be played, and the season starts tonight. See? Kevin says, not game-related, but what can be done with Angel Fernandez's uh, strike zone vision seeping into the rest of the umpires? Does Angel uh, have blackmail video of Rob or something? I don't know. All I know, Kevin, is that the league is getting worse and worse, and they're pushing themselves to a freaking robo-umpire crew at some point. It's already been implemented in the umpire, in the uh, minors. <clears throat> it looks weird because even with, with some of the umpires there, they also do a thing where the player will tap his helmet and look backwards and they automatically have to review that last pitch. It's crazy, but we're going to get to a point like that. And it's, it's, it's going to make some difference. It's going to cause some more controversy. I, it, it start to me, it started with country Joe West. You've always had bad umpires, but the fact we knew their names, the fact that, you know, he would go out of his way to be an asshole. If you, if you even called him out on anything, if you, and especially when replay came along, he even got worse. And then her, you know, Hernandez is even this, even, I didn't think anyone could be worse than Joe West. And he is. And, and again, there's no, I mean, at least in hockey, you've seen it. NFL, when there's bad officiating, they say, okay, you're not eligible to do the playoffs. You're not, uh, you've been suspended or you've been, uh, you know, relieved for a little bit. You know what I mean? Baseball is just like, yeah, go back out there. Who cares? You know, it's like, I don't get it. I just them and the witnesses uh, that I believe in the devil. Wait, what? I just them. Oh, I, I got to refer to that one. I just them and the witnesses that I believe in the devil. Oh, it's because of them. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, Chair. Uh, that's two different religions right there. But, yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, Marty says, Joe West was an asshole only to be trumped by Angel Hernandez. I agree. That is, I agree, big time right there. Uh, and I think, uh, let's see, do we have any more comments here? Well, that's it? Okay. So, <clears throat> what the hell's going on out here? There's another time we get to play that Lombardi s- sound bite because, the Angels come out and lose to Boston. And well, I'm going to get into the scores and real quick preview tomorrow's game because tomorrow's game is going to be another, well, it's going to be a morning game. And I stupidly put my, my day off and was like, hey, you know what? I'm going to sit around, watch this game. I think the Angels are going to do good. And I forgot who was pitching. I was I was under the impression it was Tyler Anderson. Tyler Anderson's going tomorrow. Two games started, 14 innings pitched, only eight hits allowed. Only three walks allowed. He's got eight strikeouts. His ERA is at a sparkling zero. And it's not going to stay that way forever, but hey, let's keep it going for as long as you possibly can. Just two more innings to break the Angels record as far as most um, innings without allowing a run, especially to start the start the season. And uh, we could do that tomorrow. He's going to be pitching against, I believe here we have, I got to find Boston's uh, stuff right here. It's going to be uh, Bello tomorrow. So uh, Bello is a guy who we can, we could jump all over if you, if given an opportunity. Uh, he does have pretty crappy stats so far to start the season. <clears throat> so he's allowed about nine runs already. So again, the Angels got to put this one in play tomorrow and not get fooled on the strikeouts because if you do, it, it will be a long day when it comes to that. So you got that going. And real quick, uh, I'll get in a few more comments here before we jump out or unless you guys want to take some phone calls, <clears throat> we could do that as well. But let me just go over the scoreboard real quick uh, to get you guys up to date on what's going on on this Saturday. Uh, in the ninth inning or going to the bottom of the fifth inning, I should say the Yankees are blowing out the shit fucks eight to nothing in game two. Uh, Arizona and St. Louis play later tonight. The Raiders host the Padres later. The Mariners host the Cubs later. In game one, the Yankees beat the shit fucks three to two. Uh, the Tigers uh, lose to the Twins at home 11 to five. The Royals stay hot. They are 10 and five. They beat the Mets 11 to seven. The Reds shut out the White Sox. The White Sox suck ass right now. They lost five to nothing at home. Rockies lose in Toronto five to three. The Brewers continue to surprise because they were supposed to be down after the players they lost and stuff like that, but a good start to the season for them. They are 10-3. and three. They beat the Orioles again in Baltimore, 11-5. to five. They scored 11 runs yesterday as well. The Phillies come back to beat the Pirates 4-3. to three. 
the Astros win only their fifth game of the year, 9-2 to two over the Rangers. They've already faced each other five times this year. The Nationals beat the Athletics. Boy, that, that must have had like five people in the stands up there in Oakland. Uh, our, once again, our Angels lose 7-2. to two. Uh, they fall to seven and seven. The Marlins finally win. They win five to one, get their third win of the season over the Braves. The Giants beat the Rays uh, in Tampa 11 to two. And then also a game two doubleheader, which just concluded the Twins beat the Tigers four to one. So there are your games right there. Let's see if you guys want to call in the show. 714-598-3221. 714-598-3221. Uh, let's see. Marty says, boys will come back no doubt tomorrow. He's he's already said, look, I had to put my honk away, but I'm pulling it back out. <laughs> Kevin says, unfortunately, Anderson and Reed are the only guys we can count on. We pull off this series victory tomorrow. Oh, that's two guys playing with a honk. <laughs> The chair says updated. Uh, what is it? Seating um, updated fans in attendance. Why can't I speak? 5,777. That is god awful, dude. God awful. Milwaukee was brewing lots of offense today. <sighs> that That's terrible. That's terrible. Anna, I'm just going to ask you right now, why? Just why? I mean, you must get a lot of those jokes. It's the Halo Honk line. Hey, Todd. What's up? Who's this? It, it's, our, it's our Martinez. What's up, our hey. Martinez? How you doing, man? Just wanted to... Good, good, man. Thank you. Thank you for having your show. I just want to say thank you for that, man, for... Um, putting up with us <laughs> um but <laughs> you're definitely a good outlet man I, I i like to listen i don't know i'm going to confess something i like to listen to the dodgers after they lose their whatever their their uh, touch the post game is mm -hmm. because at least there's a little sense there's a little sense of uh of um tr transparency honesty um like the callers calling they get mad they express themselves and they sometimes let them you know they let them come through with calls that are not favorable you know like that talk down on the Dodgers and stuff. And I like that. And um, I like when they lose because the, the fans call in, they're like mad and stuff, you know, they get mad and, and it's just fun. I, but when they win, I don't even pay attention. It's boring, you know? Oh yeah. But yeah. I like to see them. I like to see them, you know, start, start gripping and start panicking when they lose, you know, one or two in a row. And then, you know, Dave Roberts gets all the bad, bad calls. And he gets all the bad calls, you know, Dave Roberts, Dave, Dave Roberts, this, Dave Roberts, that. Oh yeah, um, yeah. But yeah. Hey, um anyway, I, I was gonna say, um, dang, I forgot my little boy made me forget what I was gonna say. He's annoying. Um <laughs> shoot, what was I gonna say? Um you heard him in the back? Did you hear him in the back? Uh, yeah, I can hear I can hear him. He's he's being oh, he's a, <laughs> yeah, right and it was right at this time that I got on the phone though. You know how kids do that? Oh yeah, yeah. He's I quiet knew. the whole time else. They know how to do Yeah. Hey, um fuck, I forgot what I was gonna say, man. I was the reason why I was calling. Um, I, as far as like, um, uh, like the angels red, like the color, the uniforms, mm -hmm. I know you talked about it before. I, um, I, I wish they would just stick to like a better looking red. I, I hate the red that they use right now. I know it's called like a scarlet red or something, mm -hmm. but like every, uh, every team in the MLB has a nice red, even, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, even the Dodgers, you know, they have, they have that little red on, on their numbers. That okay. red is clean. The Red Sox have clean red. The angels, when I see the angels red, I don't like it. It's like there's a there's a difference between the jersey red and then the cap, the cap red. And I wish they would just go like more like a uniform type red. I, I don't know. I don't like that red. And red is my favorite color, but I don't know how they can get. They even get that wrong. You know, the angels organization <laughs> even get that that wrong. You can't even get a right a good red. There's a lot of choices to pick for, for when it comes to red, like nice, clean looking ones. But the angels can't even get that that right i want them to pick a different like a different shade of red if they're gonna do red you know yeah yeah i don't know maybe you agree or disagree i, I i'm i'm for whatever change like can help the team even if it's a jersey color like my thing was like i would like yeah. i'm like halo joe i would like to go back to a retro look and the red that they had in their retro look was a much better red like you're saying it's a different red from this one um but okay yeah, we'll we'll see what they do because I mean I'm surprised it's it's been over 20 years and usually franchises unless they're historic won't change their jerseys. 
but teams, you know, every 10 to 15 years usually do a revamp or a rebrand. And the Angels haven't done one in quite some time. So I don't know if that's going to happen when Artie leaves or, you know, wow. leaves the earth, basically. Or, um, yeah, yeah or, uh, or he actually decides, hey, I want to make some more money and rebrands. I, I think the red that they choose is on the lower tier of cost wise. So they just go with whatever, whatever costs less, you know, that shade of red. Oh, we'll go with this one. This is tier, you know, it's like <laughs> it's tier eight. Yeah, and then that's like the lowest cost. Okay, we'll go with that red instead of going a little bumping it up some, you know. But anyway, discount already. That's the way of saving money. Yep, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I forgot what I was going to call. I called him, but I'll call him next time. All right, I'll you got it, R. Yeah, if you want, just leave it in the comments right. if you remember. All right. All right, yeah, bro. Thanks, man. Thanks. You got it. He gone. <laughs> Yeah, I left, I left him on there a little bit er, uh, longer since he couldn't remember for sure. But Robert says, okay, Closet Dodger fan, that's no long, that's longer than 90 seconds. Don't hate on the red. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, that's a Robert. Uh, let's see, what's Grinky and Bum Gardner up to right now? Would you, would you take one or both of those guys at this point? That's what I want to know. Uh, let's see, the chair going right to the uh, attendance. He uh, called his boy up there, 3,000. It's the Halo Honk line. Hey, what's going on, Todd? What's going on, Eric? How you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing all right. Now, I guess the Mariners have not won two in a row. Mm -hmm. Have won two games in a row. And I know that they have to face a pretty good, that pretty good Japanese pitcher tonight from the Cubs. Oh, yeah. But if they, if they can do it, Oh, Brown, I think you got something to add if we can do that. Yeah, the Mariners need to start kicking it up a little bit because the fans are nervous. I know you guys went to the playoffs a couple of years ago. It was a down year last year. You want to get yeah. back to the postseason, and uh, this di this division's tough. If, if we don't get going, someone's going to go. I would have to say that if the Mariners don't make the playoffs this year, as much as DePoto's changed that organization, I think he's going to get fired, and I think the manager's going as well. I mean, I think uh, if you're going to take out one, you got to take out both, I think. Well said. Yeah. 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 And I think, like, the whole issue with the strikeout is huge. I mean, that's just pathetic. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah, when you're striking out 10 to 15 times a game, you're killing yourself. You're shooting yourself in the foot every freaking time. So, oh boy, and I can tell you that somebody's probably going to tell me that my time's up. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> always do that. Oh, man. I'll have I'll have you on here in a longer segment. All right, uh, Eric, we'll we'll get right, you buddy. on. All right, buddy. He gone. <laughs> That's Eric calling in from Seattle. We appreciate the phones. If you guys want to call in, 714-598-3221. What are the comments we have here? He says, Eric ch chimes in with the Mariners have won two in a row. Yes, but he was just saying that they got the, uh, for Chicago, that big pitcher going tomorrow uh, is called Lou Brown. I, I don't know if that's, uh, or or he may be called Lou Brown one day. I don't know. That's what Eric's saying right there. AC says, Taylor Ward wins MVP and Detmere Cy Young. Angels win. Angels finish 70 and 92. <laughs> I can see, see that right there. Marty saying, speaking of Artie, where is that drunken fool? Dude, I, I don't know where he's at on a Sunday. He should be here. Again, we had a Canadian, uh, you know, Canadian podcast call in last night. So, uh, you know, either we get Artie, we get freaking Terry. Now we have that Canadian podcast. Uh, let's see. Some, sometime Rendon's pants get a little red if he doesn't have a tampon in. Oh, that's nasty. Oh, gnarly. Not really. <laughs> I would take Grinky right now unless Urias beats them to the deal. Oh, jeez. Imagine having Urias and Bauer on the same team. That that would which the Dodgers had, I think, at the same time. So who knows? Anna says uh, there's a funny Photoshop moment with 50 Cent throwing a ceremonial first pitch, but it's Vlad Guerrero when he did a blooper to shortstop in Baltimore many years ago. I think I might have seen that. Rendon had two more hits. He's batting 300 in his last 30 at bats, 10 for 30. Yeah, that's that's the thing that you're gonna see. 
or hear from Roger when it comes on uh when he comes back on on Monday. He's gonna be like, it's okay. He was over 25. He's 10 for his last 30. Positive, positive, positive. And Anna says, balls, balls, and Angel Hernandez. Time for you to check out what I want. I want balls and balls and John Stamos. Angel Hernandez. Joe uh, West walked so Angel Hernandez could rule this chick. Let's see, Todd. Eric was mentioning the Cubs pitcher named Shota Imanga. <laughs> That's my best. I, I, I don't know. See, again, he reads English, Shohei, better than I can read English myself. Julio Rodriguez is off to a sizzling start. Uh, that's the Mariners right there, AC says. And uh, he's uh, also, it's raining here in Irvine as I sit in my hot tub here. Thanks for the weather report. Uh, but uh, if you're not a Halo Haunt. If you're a so-called Angel fan, if you're a Halo Haunt for life like me, then shut up. By the way, today's Angels played like this. Yeah, Mo, that team sure did suck last night. They just played sucked. I've seen teams suck before, but they were the suckiest bunch of sucks that ever sucked. Yeah, they didn't have much going on tonight. Angels used the darker red back then. They did, and uh, you know it. It was a it was a nicer red. Uh, there's a there's like a pink in the red. <laughs> oh man, uh, what what it's come down to for Angel fans when the only hope that you have is possibly possibly changing the color red or the jerseys hoping that'll make a difference like back in the day when houston got away from those brick red jerseys and turned them in and pinstripe and turned them into an old school look because that's i mean that's what a lot of angel fans want to see is a return to the old school robert says todd can you make uh one move or can you make one move to the rotation with the franchise what would you do as far as like if i were to make uh, a move for the rotation would well, obviously, if it's outside of the organization, it's Bauer. If it's inside the organization, um, I'd have to wait another month. I would say wait another month and ride this rotation out as far as I can with it and see what Soriano gives you. And then what my one move would be is either keep Soriano in the rotation and or demote him. And if I keep him, then the one move would be getting rid of someone else in the rotation to bring up wants because wants was the uh, what is it? M I I B player of the week. And he's been off to a solid start for, for salt Lake. So if he continues to shine, then why not give him a shot? And then what if you have Soriano and wants two former bullpen guys in your rotation with Anderson and freaking, uh, you know, uh, Detmers, and then whatever you can get from either if Sil Seth is healthy or if you're still pitching uh, with with Canning, you know, there, there, there's it would it would pretty much shake up the rotation. But if Soriano in his last start didn't pitch all that bad, he just had that real bad first inning where he didn't get any breaks. We'll have to see how he continues. But if he's if he's a, a starting pitcher that's going to stay in your rotation for a little bit. And I would say wants would be the guy from the so so just a long winded answer. If it's inside the organization, it's wants. If it's outside the organization, it's Bauer. I mean, the fact that if the only if that's the only move you got, then that's the only move you're gonna get. Because again, I think the whole Urias thing, even if he were cleared, I know he's gotten like the charges, most of them dropped. The fact of the matter is you're going to need some time away from MLB. So that's why I know for a fact he won't be signed. It would have to be next year uh, for a guy like Urias to return. And I'm just a little surprised Bauer hasn't gotten a job yet. I know he signed with Mexico, but he could break that contract lickety split and come back to the majors. Um, and he will. I, I think he he's either going to be one of those deadline additions or a guy that, you know, maybe a team like the Yankees or a few other teams that have playoff aspirations lose the, the starting pitcher for the year. Like I'm surprised like Atlanta doesn't take a shot at him, you know, losing their starting pitcher for the year. I mean, look, you're going to face whoever gets him is going to get flack. No matter if you believe that he's innocent or not, you're going to have a huge, uh, you know, uprising of fans that are going to say, I'm not going to go see this team because Bauer's there. Or you're going to see people get upset and say, 
oh, you know, you can't allow him to be in there. There's going to be, you know, certain activists that are going to speak out about it. But that stuff will all go under the rug. The same, I'm telling you, the same thing happened with Michael Vick. And you know how people treat animals over humans. And they had protesting the whole nine yards. And what? how long did that last? Half a season? And then all the bad publicity was gone. And then you still had your Vic haters. You still have them to this day. But he's tur- he turned a lot of heads and a lot of people forgave him. And again, if I, I, I think it would go a long way. Vic, see, Vic came out and apologized in public. And even if Bauer knows he's innocent, if he were to come out and just leave a statement like, hey, you know what? Some of the things that I do behind closed doors aren't the best and I'm working on myself, even if he's not. You throw out a PC comment and a PC statement. His public public relations uh, dude or woman should come out there and, and have something prepared for him so that he can give a, a statement that makes him uh, sound like he's remorseful, even if he's not. Play the part. Put it out there that you want to change. You, you, you've gone to counseling, even if you haven't. Do that, and I swear to God, people will forgive you, and he'll come. Because Michael Vick did. He said he's done with that. He he cut off family members that did dog fighting. He went through the whole gambit, and he actually there was proof of him actually going and, and doing uh what is it called um uh stuff for the community and, and and doing stuff for uh for for animals like giving back, doing community service is what I mean. And people forgave him. The large amount of people forgave him. And that's why he was able to continue his career. That's why he's on television today. Had he not done all that, he wouldn't be where he's at today. And I think that's where Bauer needs to do. And I think if Urias wants to come back into people's good graces, it's the same thing. These guys got to humble themselves and realize, okay, whether or not judiciously they made a mistake or, uh, you know, you still in the public eye are guilty until proven innocent. It sucks, but you have to kind of make up for it and you have to play the part. And if you're not going to play the part, this might be the end result where you never get another chance. And that could be your fault and it couldn't be your fault. You know what I mean? So I would love to see Bauer pitch again. And as a greedy Angel fan who wants to see winning, I would push away all the stuff that bothered me before because, again, he was innocent in the court of law. So whatever happened behind closed doors, we may never know whether he did it or not, but he's innocent. He's out there and another pitcher that could help our team win. Why not you take a chance? AC says Rosenberg been decent in 3A, but he's never cracked it in the majors. That's what scares me. At least those other guys are unproven. We haven't seen what they could do. Marty says, I wasn't a fan of getting Bauer. However, after seeing Canning and Sandy's efforts, I'm down to have this crackhead in the rotation. Jeez. Uh, Giovanni Perez says honk honk so he's like I don't care that they lost today I I just don't care I'm just going to pull it out and say (laughs) Strider out for the year Spencer's stride is officially broken he won't be moving for a while (sighs) I think we get Bauer he can pitch or he sure can pack a punch jeez is it open mic day Bauer may have choked out a few in the bedroom, but he hasn't choked out on the mound. Let's sign him. Jeez. CJ Wilson may give you a better start than Canning. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Bauer didn't break any laws, but Shohei did. I agree with that. <laughs> because, uh, I mean, look, dude, he, I still say, that you, you got to get him on a suspension with the league. You, you, he's so acting like he's so innocent. Then Rob Manfred's like, yeah, you, you're you so cool. Can you hit a ball far again? Uh, Grillmaster says, I just cut a fart that produced more than Zach Neto. Cue the fart sound. <sighs> so, I, mean, I mean, that is kind of funny. But uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Bauer may give us a black guy. <laughs> serious john stamus chokes on bauer (laughs) 
It's disgusting. Uh, let's see. Both Bauer and Urias can be a one-two punch for us. <laughs> Oscar coming through. I like that. I like that a lot. Yes. Just give us those two starters, and I'll take it, dude. I mean, <laughs> think about it, man. Those two starters, as good as Detmers has been, and as good as Tyler Anderson would be, has been. I mean, you bring you bring those two guys in. And that's a magical rotation. Then you could pick from three or four average Joes to be that number five, and that number five all of a sudden turns into a decent number five. And why do I think that Sandoval wouldn't make that five man rotation? Would you? Here's a question, real quick. Would you if you if you had Urias, Bauer, Anderson, and Detmers, who gets that fifth spot? And how many of you would put Sandoval in there at five? I mean, come on, man. Uh, Marty says Neto still uh, going to be a future captain of this team, Todd. I think so. He's just, I mean, defensively, he's already there. He just has not freaking put it together in, in the box. Uh, he's, he's, you know, he started great last year. And for some reason, Numbnuts, Nevin, and crew helped him to suck and get into some really bad mechanics. Balls, balls, and a five-star review. Yes, please give a five-star review on the podcast form, but like and subscribe. Only 30% of our of our uh, subscribers uh, are actually, or actually 30% of our audience are subscribers. So we got to change that. Uh, but why would you throw out an experience really? Yes, yes, I know. That's I missed that part. That was a great clip that Randy grabbed from one of my epic rants. I haven't had but one epic rant so far this season. Like it seemed like last season was like every other day I was yelling and having to calm down. Uh, it was it was a tough it was a tough year last year, man. Worst year as a fan. Uh, real quick, let's just play this one more time since uh, one more time since we per, uh, we premiered it earlier, and that is the best opening right here as far as a video. When we lose a, a truly madly deeply game from start to finish. Obviously, that's not dude's real voice, but I have to play the guy that uh, doesn't give me a copyright. So <laughs> that's why that's why the voice and Savage Garden don't exactly stack up the the right way. But uh, we got any clips of Randy's rants to post on here? They're always gold, <laughs> dude. I'm telling you, Randy can give you the best the best rants. I mean, look, all you have to do it's sort of like the epitome of poking a bear. If you talk any shit about the Jets or you bring up any bad memories about the Jets, he is on one and on one for a long time, and it's rightfully so. That franchise gives you a ton of what uh, Grillmaster said. Emotional damage! <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's always tough, man. I mean, Jesus. Uh, but, uh, but, yeah, Randy can come through with some very, very... <sighs> Song sounds like toes, Todd. Will you shut up, Grill? You shut up. We all have our thing. Let's see. Fuck the Jets being the Dodgers of the NFL. <laughs> oh, <geez>. oh. <laughs> I'm sure Randy really appreciates. Oh, Hayes too jumping in with fuck the Jets. <laughs> oh man, I think football season is going to be fun once we get going here. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, you guys are poking the bear, dude. And Randy's going to come on here and just torch all of you guys. <laughs> Randy comes out strong on a rant. I know he loves the kid Hunter or his kid's mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm not even going to touch that one, man. I'm just... How dare you? That's a tough one right there. If you know, uh, yeah, I'm not going to even touch that one. That's going to get me in trouble. Uh, so I think that's about it for tonight uh, or for today. <laughs> Good show, everybody. Thank you for uh, calling in. Thank you guys for uh, the, the, making the comments always great. It's the usual, even on a loss. And again, 7-7 seven and seven would not have thought that the Angels were uh, going to be world beaters by any stretch of the imagination. But 
you know, we there's some games where they should win and you should have better pitching and, and you could critique it. And this is one of them. The Angels, the Angels had no right losing to a, a team like this and not putting up much of a fight. Uh, but Boston is not that good. And the Angels, uh, they made them look, you know, better than what they are. And, and uh, we let them off the hook, man. But they are who we thought they were. And we let them off the hook. Yep. So tomorrow we can't let them off the hook. We got to beat them tomorrow. So for Todd Fox, Randy, and everybody on Halos in the infield, and shout out to my boy Fernando. It's tough, man. You got to you just got to pull through, and uh, things will get better. I know it's game over for the freaking uh, the Coyotes, but uh, you know maybe they'll get another franchise. I think I don't know. That whole thing's just a a um, a mess. And one more shout out. Shout out to. Uh, Shout out to our boy Shauna Will. Get well. These nuts. Yeah, please get well as soon as possible. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Catch you on the flip side. Go Angels.